Hi everyone. Uh, we are back today to continue talking about fighting COVID. What are some other things that are happening? We've had different perspectives. We had lawyer, we had uh, a doctor, and then yesterday we had somebody from the political circles. So each giving their perspective. Uh, and today we thought we'll bring someone uh, from uh, another country uh, who can shed a perspective on what's happening. Um, see, uh, one of the things we've all been talking about is how uh, it took an epidemic for the whole world to come together. Because this epidemic is has no sense of caste, creed, color, country, anything of that sort. It could be anywhere and everywhere. And, uh, and to fight it, we all have to come together uh, to fight it and to stand against it. And in some ways, we we cannot be together. This is a very strange phenomena where we have to have social distancing. We cannot be together. And at the same time, we have to be together in ways we have never been together before. So this is an interesting conundrum. It's an interesting times to be at. And we can learn from everyone, from all over the world. So we wanted to bring somebody in uh, who can bring a perspective and has been in India uh, for a while. Uh, Geete Shagarwal has been a trade commissioner from Queensland and has dealt with everything from commerce to social to various aspects of India and been building bridges um, between the two countries. So we thought that we'll bring him on board and talk about uh, what has his perspective. Uh, been what are some of the things that they are observing and uh, uh, in what way will this in any way influence uh, change alter uh, the relationships between the two countries so uh, if you give me a second i'll get Geetish online hi Geetish. hi lakshmi how are you doing good evening i'm doing good how are you very well just Waiting for all of this to return back to normal. Am I audible? So where, are, where are you right now? I beg your pardon? Where are you right now? At home. In Bangalore. In Bangalore, yes. Uh, enjoying the rainy weather outside. Yes, yes. So, uh, so Geetesh, I wanted to just um, have you talk a little bit about what you usually do. You've been a trade commissioner. Investment Commission for the Queensland Government out of Bangalore for India. Uh, we are the second largest state of Australia and we've had very deep ties with India. Uh, Queensland is part of everyone's life in India without them realizing it. We do about $10 billion of trade with India, but we are very much uh, part of everything that you use from your iPhone to your, to your laptops, to your mobiles, to the chips you eat. Uh, to the healthcare fight that we are all having right now. So very relevant, uh, we are, as I call it, we are co-creators of destinies of both the countries and the world right now. So collaborators and partners. So now, uh, obviously with this, uh, with what we are going through uh, right now, first of all, tell us how is the situation in Queensland and you are, you are, I'm sure you have family there, you know, how has it been? Uh, and secondly, also talk about how is this going to change what we do? Because I think there's going to be a lot of hesitation to travel at least for another six months or so. I think everything is uh, being, uh, ground, we are all being grounded in some ways. So tell me uh, a little bit about, first of all, what's happening in Queensland and then what do you think, uh, it, it, you know, our future is going to be? Thank you, Lakshmi. Uh, it's a black swan moment in the humanity's history, and Australia has very much been uh, part of this fight right now. So mm -hmm. about a month ago, uh, there was a closure of borders of Australia in itself. About uh, a fortnight ago, flights stopped landing and leaving Australia. And about a week ago, Queensland itself uh, locked its state borders. So. Mm -hmm. The lockdown is now being impacted in regulations and federal laws. For example, uh, as of today morning, um, only two people can go out together. So if someone's visiting you as family, maximum two people, apart from your immediate family. 
if it's uh, marriages, just five people. If it's funeral, then 10 people. You can still go out to buy essentials, uh, a light exercise, but you need to definitely exercise the rule of social distancing. Uh, mm -hmm. And what we are seeing is the country right now has about 6,000 cases. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, the curve, they believe, will be flattening if we exercise these, uh, you know, new norms of social behavior with the uh, most sincerity, not because it keeps you safe, because it, it, it keeps the other people you come in contact with safe. Right, right, yeah. So, um, you know, do you, do, are your parents there? Who's in Queensland right now that's closely related to you? Uh, yeah, to be honest, my fortunately, my immediate family, my kids and my wife, they are with me here. And uh, <coughs> my parents have always been in India, in Chennai, so they are safe. Uh, okay. The challenge is we can't visit them and we can't get them over to right. be together in these towns. So yeah. it's office in Queensland and everyone else that I really uh, care about are right next door. So now from a trade uh, uh, point of view, from a delegate's point, I mean, you obviously used to take a lot of people from here to Queensland, bring people from there to here. You, you know, part of the job was to make sure people travel to each other's places. Uh, of course, you can still do trade, you can still do your job if, even without people traveling. But in what way do you feel this has already changed what you were doing in the last three weeks or so? And how do you think this will change what you do? Well, seven, seven billion people on this planet, we are meant to meet, we are meant to connect, we are meant to engage, learn from yeah. each other, find each other's needs and satisfy them. That's what validates humanity. Uh, yeah. There is something that someone has that someone needs. Uh, uh -huh. Queensland was um, very popular with Indian students, uh, like in the rest of Australia, and also very popular with travelers from India for tourism. But those two industries have felt a sudden impact uh, straight away because until borders open up, people start moving uh, from one country to the other. That particular transaction, if you would like to call it, is on a pause. Mm -hmm. so tourism and education as two important services will take um, uh, quite a bit of an impact. I think that's true for even India and most countries, most Europe as well. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, we were getting a... Sorry, mm -hmm. carry on. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Fortunately, we got a figure today that um, a lot of students had left Australian shores to come back home for the Christmas holidays. And we did a roll count from the Indians studying in Queensland, only 5% are still out of the country. The rest of them are back in Australia. So they are very much there going through their courses. A lot of effort is being made by Study Queensland, which is an arm of uh, our own office, Trade and Investment Queensland, as well as uh, all the universities together to support them in these times of need. Mm -hmm. So, in you know, is uh, in Australia as a country, uh, what measures are they taking? Like in the US, they're saying that they may give relief, uh, uh, you know, packages to people and things like that, you know. Um, or like, for example, the U.S. State Department said anybody who is here, American citizen, wants to go back. The State Department is giving them a loan uh, to book their ticket, get them home. They'll pick you up from home. They'll get you back home. So they're doing a lot of things to get their people back into the country. Uh, so uh, and uh, and what is uh, Australia doing? And you know, obviously Queensland is part of Australia. But what's happening there in terms of economic reliefs or anything of that sort? Well, uh, the government has stepped up. There's a cohesive engagement and momentum by both the federal government and state governments. They're all coming in together. I think about $200 billion of effort has been already announced, which will mm -hmm. be putting money in the hands of uh, families, uh, the unemployed, the uh, small business owners, uh, mm -hmm. especially the, um, you know, the cafe owners, etc., whose business has straight away been impacted. There are mm -hmm. helplines to uh, manage depression in these times, uh, mm -hmm. even uh, violence in family. There is a, a helpline to take care of inquiries as to what should I do in such times of need. Mm -hmm. uh, local industries are coming together to uh, create exactly what's happening in the rest of the world. Ventilators, masks, mm -hmm. uh, the healthcare um, uh, workers are out there fighting this battle. Mm -hmm. The elective surgeries are being postponed. Mm -hmm. Bottom line, they know they are um, a country far away from the rest of the world. And the right. best they can do is 
flatten the curve. And everyone is coming together to do it and keeping mm -hmm. everyone, uh, I would say, trying to keep business as usual in this new normal, though it's not going to be easy. Right, right. And so in general, when you look at India and Australia, I mean, you've, uh, you've been there and you live here and you're constantly bridging uh, the two cultures, etc. What do you feel are very similar? What do you feel are polar opposites? I mean, that just, you know, they are very, very different. I mean, what are the things that you felt, uh, you know, kind of uh, taken aback about? And what are the things you feel? Oh, it's the same everywhere. But people are same everywhere. They're warm. They're friendly. Uh, it's a global world. It's a curious mix of every nationality, language, food, culture. Uh, yes, Australia and India have always had the cricket and the beer to talk about. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, and Australians playing in IPL. India doing number three in the Commonwealth Games, which we hosted two years ago. So there's a mutual respect. Uh, there are a lot of Indians in Australia heading very large uh, uh, you know, research institutions and faculty heads. So there is extreme respect for the country and vice versa. India looks at Australia for um, solutions in agriculture, in uh, healthcare, in uh, vaccine development, to take care of its infrastructure, steel industry, resources, minerals. So there is quite a bit of interdependency, uh, both as a supply mm -hmm. partner and as markets. Mm -hmm. So if you ask me, the only difference I see is uh, in India, we are um, in all directions at once. And in yeah. Australia, it's about black and white and linear. Yeah. And uh, in India, it's about Jugaad, the Indian innovation. In Australia, yeah. it's a very step-by-step -step formal uh, solution to a problem. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So which do you think, I mean, do you think for each country that works or is there something we can learn from each other uh, to to you know, get ourselves better? I think we can learn from each other better. There's nothing called uh, captive knowledge in today's world. Everyone uh -huh. should engage what India is doing. Today morning, we were on a call by Fiki, uh, quite a few of us from Australia and uh, in India. And there was a clear indication that Australia is looking at India for the low cost in, uh, ventilators, mm -hmm. the uh, rapid testing uh, kits that India is developing. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and and India would look at Australia for the way it's reached out through digital health, the remote communities, and how it's mm -hmm. trying to border them. Uh, Can you talk a little bit about it? Because there is such a law. I mean, like Australia as a country, probably only what 20% of the land is occupied or what, what percent of land is really occupied? Well, half of the country is uh, actually desert. So it's right. more of the yeah. uh, line cities which are occupied uh -huh. and quite a bit of hinterland as well. Correct. But the population and, I mean, is uh, just about bang. It's, it's a vast country, you know, with a lot of open space. And, of course, the aboriginals are still there. And, you know, it's sort of uh, uh, just like India. You know, we have the wealthy and we have the tribals. I mean, the whole gamut of uh, stuff that's there. So what has especially Australia done to reach to the far corners, uh, to reach to everybody? Uh, how have they been able to do that? Is there something to learn from it? Absolutely. So every, uh, just like India, the Australia has councils, the regional areas, their mayors and their councillors, and everyone's coming together to look after their own uh, uh, captive populations and, and uh, members. So mm -hmm. the rules apply for the entire land, just like in India, it's a Commonwealth law. Uh, mm -hmm. it, uh, the enforcement is uh, a mix of citizen participation and also, uh, I would say, conscious decision to do it together. So Australia has been able to reach out to its um, communities in the farthest corners uh, mm -hmm. through its uh, existing system of uh, regional and uh, central collaboration. And, mm -hmm. and, and everyone's making the efforts to keep them away. I would say the same should happen in India. We have a very good system here of states right. and districts and panchayats and gram villages. I think mm -hmm. all of them uh, need to come together and the only difference is in Australia you can get away with English and, and share the same uh, information across. In India it is very imperative that vernacular uh, communication makes people understand the need to right now do what is being asked to do. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like for example, I mean, I was so amazed. I mean, these are little things you don't think about, but uh, uh, you know, when you call somebody, you first have to listen to a message about the coronavirus, right, and what you need to do, etc. When it first started, it was all in English, you know. And now I hear it in Canada. I hear it in Telugu. I hear, you know, whoever I call, depending on what service they have, uh, it's in different languages. So, you know, I was sharing this with someone from US, and they were like, "What an interesting idea that you're forced to listen to this message, right? You can't skip it or anything. So, this is a way in which everybody gets to listen uh, to a message in their own language. So, it's a way to educate everyone." Uh, you know i must also give you an anecdote that appeared today in the papers that a lady who was quarantined in a hotel chose to step uh-huh. out and she was fined 1300 dollars for bre- for breaking the law and then she uh-huh. chose to step out again for changing a fresh towel and she was fined another 2000 dollars for breaking that law so uh-huh. i think enforcement sometimes is important uh, right. so that people realize yeah and where was this this uh, story from Australia? I don't know which part of Australia, but it appears yeah in Australia, but in one of the cities. In Australia, okay, okay. So actually, um, you know, how is Australia from uh, uh, that point, from a law and enforcement uh, point of view? I mean, are people generally disciplined and they listen to whatever is said, or like for example, if you take a country like Germany or you know whatever. Uh, people are very rule conscious they are very conscientious they don't you know kind of um, try to cut corners they're perfectionists and all that stuff whereas you know sometimes when you take parts of india it's sort of like it's it's for everybody you know whoever can uh, the survival of the fittest uh, kind of a thing at times and uh, uh, and and i'll speed until i get caught you know <laughs> a lot of uh, things are like that and but each has its own charm its own uh, purpose and uh, for different countries they are different so how are the australians i mean of course you can gross generalize a whole country you know i mean in india you know one part of bangalore doesn't behave like another part of bangalore but at the cost of that uh, generalization is um, is australia generally a law abiding do people just listen to whatever the government says or is it a little you know kind of rebellious no it's it's australia is australia so they they have a common phrase take it easy mate and no yeah. worries uh, yeah. it is a, a country with very strict laws common with laws it it's a democratic country uh, uh-huh. people are compliant uh, self compliant so self, they yeah. uh, like to follow laws because they see it's for their betterment there is right. uh, and the laws include respect whether it's uh, driving in the right way giving mutual respect for the size you know side of the road to doing things right so it comes uh, naturally there's strict uh, laws on 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 uh, bribery etc so overall australia is very very um, law abiding and compliant to what is being asked it's rebellious on the field it 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 likes to play the game the hard way punch above its weight it's in a corner of the world so mm-hmm. it, it it has got its own uh, uh, wild streak that the world respects but mm-hmm. then they enjoy a beer forget it all and they cheers mate take it easy so so australia yeah. is a mix of the the light heartedness of life at the same yeah. time follow yeah. life properly and also all those who are listening if you have any questions just pop it up i'll ask itesh uh, for you so just uh, just feel free to ask questions um the other thing itesh is that uh, you know uh, in the relationship between queensland and india what were the you talked about education uh, you talked about uh, uh, you know things that are really important but for uh, for actually the relationship between the queensland and india tell me the top 3 areas uh, that uh, are most uh, needed from both sides that are most relevant on both sides in fact i must give you a good news that appeared as of today morning even in indian papers so yeah. uh, griffith university from gold coast has partnered uh, india immunologicals limited in hyderabad for a vaccine mm-hmm. uh, oh, they're wow. working together uh, mm-hmm. university of queensland is already in a preclinical trial stage with the dutch firm now for another vaccine mm-hmm. uh, so 
straight away there's a mutual um, uh, dependency that's coming through, not just for India but for the entire world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. From our perspective, uh, to answer your question, apart from the education that we spoke about, what Queensland has been partnering India is in mining. So India needs its resources, and we mm -hmm. are known as one of the world's best cohorts for everything from coking coal to zinc, copper, etc., and the technology that we bring along, the hygiene mm -hmm. and the safety we bring along. So we worked mm -hmm. with India last year, last to last year, to draft the mine safety policy. Mm -hmm. We are working on health, so vaccinations, viruses, uh, and a lot of digital health, elder care. Mm -hmm. We are working also on biotechnology, quite mm -hmm. a bit, and research. Mm -hmm. We are working on drones. We are working mm -hmm. on electric vehicles technology because mm -hmm. uh, not many people would know. Almost four out of every five charges in the world uses the Queensland technology. Mm -hmm. We we are. Uh, uh, working on uh, agri-tech. So we've been reading about farmers' harvest not being collected on time in these COVID breakdowns and them uh, having to throw it on the road, uh, you know, hard work going down the road, as they call it. So we are bringing in technology to process it, give it mm -hmm. length of time, increase its uh, shelf space so that the farmers can actually double their income by mm -hmm. uh, finding a value addition. So mm -hmm. there's, there's partnership with the best practices, pre-harvest, post-harvest. Mining, agriculture, health, uh, education, and food. Mm -hmm. So these are our four or five areas of collaboration, which we are very keen to in work. In terms of food, what do you do? In terms of food, um, have you ever eaten a packet of chips? Yeah, of course. Have you ever eaten a haldi rams? <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. that's made on Queensland machinery. So uh -huh. um, whether it's a Lay's or a Bingo or a Balaji Wafers or whether it's a Haldi Rams Moong Dal, uh, you're uh -huh. eating it on Queensland machinery. It's, it's a very, very globally respected automated system. And uh, uh -huh. right now it's being manufactured and assembled in India and Chennai as well. Mm -hmm. um, next time yeah. you eat an ice cream in coffee day, you might be eating a Queensland ice cream uh, uh -huh. or, uh, or made, made by the Queenslanders. And, uh -huh. and um, so, so we do a lot of food uh, formulations helping mm -hmm. with food processing. And right okay. now we are working on um, dehydrating uh, food produce so that it can find an extra length of time on shelf or in the go down. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the biggest issues in the world and especially in India is distribution of food, right? I mean, there is basically that we grow enough to actually be able to feed everyone, yeah, but it's the distribution uh, that uh, is a problem. And, uh, and some of the processing, some of the storage, you know, these are all the, all the issues. So, you know, the thing is when we talk to people like you, you know, when I talk about relationships, etc., uh, it's amazing how little we know about uh, how things are made. You know, we think we look at only final products, right? But it's sort of where did the ingredients for this come from? Where did the machinery for this come from? I mean, so it's sort of in that little moong dal, there is like five different countries involved potentially. <laughs> you know, someone's machine, someone's uh, dal, somebody's uh, chili, and somebody else's salt. You know, so uh, it's it's a global world. Yeah, we have a question about. Um, uh, when is it expected to see lift or travel restrict restrictions and normalcy uh, prevail in Australia, especially for students starting to study in July? And it is from, uh, I can't read, uh, Ashish Shetty. Yes, so, uh, hi Shetty. It's a, it's a question that we've been asking ourselves and, and so are the universities in Australia with us. Um, we were we are hoping for um, the September intakes to take place at the moment because there is no finality on which way the world is heading with this uh, impact. It's very difficult to say. So I would not be able to comment very uh, definitively on this. We are hoping that in the next two months, the world will be a much more normal place. And if that happens, then this might uh, go to next steps. But I think the reminder of the year we are in April today. I see the world uh, taking the next six months to fight the battle with COVID in a more uh, finite manner. Right, right. And I think that, uh, you know, as we said earlier today, that um, it's not just 
one country or one state's fight you know it's a global fight that's happening and i think we each can learn from like as you're saying maybe india and queensland together working together come up with a vaccine so um, and or it could be students uh, you know coming up hacking some machinery that will do something you know so it's sort of we hope that people from different disciplines different uh, geographies come together to create uh, what we need uh, so just as we wrap up your uh, 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 your uh, uh, visit to us gitesh what would you like to say about uh, especially um, uh, covid situation and what would you like to see happen i mean obviously we all want to be safe and all that stuff at the end of it uh, but uh, in terms of is there anything innovative being done that you have noticed in either of the countries that you wish they can be more of or any parting words on how can we all fight covid together well all i would say is uh, covid's been a great equalizer no matter who you are you had to do what you've been asked to do it's right. invisible uh, it's uh, at, at at one side is bringing uh, a lot of healing to the earth and at the mm -hmm. other side is ensuring that we change our social behaviors and norms mm -hmm. uh, it's brought families together it's brought people to reconsider their pace of life it's yeah. uh, made us realize the value of uh, this making your own food and cleaning your own house uh, mm -hmm. and 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 uh, yeah, and calling those friends and family who really matter so it's yeah. it's, it's been a awakening of some sort so i'm seeing uh, that this is not a moment in history where history is being made i think this is a moment in history where future is being created um, right i think we'll all come out of it together mutual respect for not just each other but for the facilities we enjoy for yeah. the hygiene that we should exercise for the respect to elements that bless us with food water and air yeah and and uh, i think we'll be a much better earth uh, at the end of it all it's true and i think thank you so much i can't i couldn't have said it better because i think if we have to go through something anyway we have to go through this gracefully and be thankful for what it's bringing us i mean uh, you know for me no travel for a whole month and to spend time with family i don't think i've done it in the last 30 years you know uh, ever be stable in one place and uh, have the time to even uh, be with everybody so thank you so much and i hope that our connection between india and queensland continues and we find ways to uh, connect with each other digitally and keep innovating thank you so much for your time and thanks Absolutely. everybody Absolutely thank you to everyone and stay safe stay healthy but more importantly stay at home yeah. Thank you so much Gitesh bye bye Thank you bye bye